Hello, Albion Church family. I hope you are staying warm and dry on this gross day right before Christmas. Um, I am Emily Oates, if we haven't met before, and I'll be reading today from Luke 18, since it is the 18th day of December and we are just one week away from Christmas. So today I'll be reading from the Message Translation. I think that hearing scriptures from a different voice sometimes helps you understand a little bit more. So I like using the message every now and then. Luke 18, 1. Jesus told them a story showing that it was necessary for them to pray consistently and never quit. He said, there once was a judge in some city who never gave God a thought and cared nothing for people. A widow in that city kept after him. My rights are being violated. Protect me. He never gave her the time of day. But after this went on and on, he said to himself, I care nothing about what God thinks, even less what people think. But because this widow won't quit badgering me, I'd better do something and see that she gets justice. Otherwise, I'm going to end up beaten black and blue by her pounding. Then the master said, do you hear what that judge, corrupt as he is, is saying? So what makes you think God won't step in and work justice for his chosen people who continue to cry out for help? Won't he stick up for them? I assure you, he will. He will not drag his feet. But how much of that kind of persistent faith will the Son of Man find on earth when he returns? The story of the tax man and the Pharisee. Jesus told his next story to some who were complacently pleased with themselves over their moral performance and looked down their noses at the common people. Two men went up to the temple, Jesus said. One a Pharisee, the other tax man. The Pharisee posed and preened and prayed like this, Oh God, I thank you that I am not like the other peoples, those robbers and crooks, adulterers, or heaven forbid, like this tax man. I fast twice a week and tithe all of my income. Meanwhile, the tax man slumped in the shadows, his face in his hands, not daring to look up, prayed, God, give mercy, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Jesus commented, this tax man and not the other went home, made right with God. If you walk around with your nose in the air, you're going to end up flat on your face. But if you are content to simply be yourself before God, you will become more than yourself. People also brought babies to Jesus, hoping that he might touch them. When the disciples saw it, they shooed them away. Jesus called them back. Let these children alone. Don't you get between them and me. These children are the kingdom's pride and joy. Mark this, unless you accept God's kingdom in the simplicity of a child, you'll never get in. One day, one of the local officials asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to deserve eternal life? Jesus said, Why are you calling me good? No one is good, only God. You know the commandments, don't you? No illicit sex, no killing, no stealing, no lying. Honor your father and your mother both. He said, well, I've kept them as long as I can remember. When Jesus heard that, he said, then there's only one thing left to do. Sell everything you own. Give it away to the poor. You will have riches in heaven. Then you come and follow me. That was the last thing the official expected to hear. He was very rich and became terribly sad. He was holding on tight to so many things and not about to let them go. But seeing his reaction, Jesus said, do you have any idea how difficult it is? for people who have it all to enter God's kingdom? I'd say it's easier to thread a camel through a needle's eye than get a rich person into, kings, into the kingdom of God. Then who has any chance at all of getting in? The others asked. <laughs> no chance at all, Jesus said, if you think you can pull it off by yourself. Every chance in the world, though, if you trust God to do it. Peter tried to regain some of the initiative. Well, we've left everything we've owned and followed you, didn't we? Yeah, said Jesus, you will not regret it. No one who has sacrificed home or spouse, brothers and sisters, parents, children, whatever, will lose out. It will all come back multiplied many times over in your lifetime. And then the bonus too of eternal life. Then Jesus took the 12 off the side and said, listen carefully, we're on our way up to Jerusalem. Everything written about in the prophets about the Son of Man will take place now. He'll be handed over to the Romans, jeered at, made sport of, and spit on. And then, after giving him the third degree, they'll kill him. 
In three days, he will rise, though, alive. But the disciples didn't understand it. They didn't get it. They could make neither heads nor tails of what Jesus was talking about. They came to the outskirts of, Jeru of Jericho then. A blind man was sitting beside the road asking for handouts. When he heard the rustle of the crowd, he asked what was going on, and they told him, Jesus, the Nazarene, is coming by. He yelled, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those ahead of Jesus told that man to shut up, but he only yelled the louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered him to be brought over. When he had come near, Jesus asked, What do you want from me? He said, Master, I want to see again. Jesus said, Go ahead, go see again. Your faith has saved you and healed you. The healing was instant for the blind man. He looked up, seeing, and then followed Jesus around, glorifying God. Everyone in the streets joined in, shouting praise to God.